Hello and welcome to Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Funnel Neptune. Today we have with us the Chief Environmental Health Officer, Mr. Parker Ragnanan, who will provide us with some information on the Public Health Act. Welcome to the program. Thank you and thanks for having me with you this, this morning. Great. Um, we have been hearing a lot about the Public Health Act. Can you give us some information on this act? The Public Health Act was really enshrined into law in 1975. It is the basis um, under which the office of the Chief Medical Officer and that of the Public Health Board functions. As we know, the Public Health Board is an as advisory board to the Minister. And the technical arm to the Public Health Board is the Division of Environmental Health. Under the Public Health Act, enshrined in 1975, there were a number of different pieces of regulations that also came into law. And this was as far back as 1978. This is what enables the, the uh, ministry to function and to have capacity to enforce. These are the regulations. And some of the critical areas of, of regulation has to do with areas such as uh, waste disposal, uh, food safety, uh, slaughterhouse regulations dealing with uh, uh, barber shops and beauty salons, regulations that deals with notifiable of certain diseases, so communicable and infectious diseases. It also made provision for regulations to deal with transportation of human remains. Uh, there are regulations that deals with bakeries, that deals with uh, hotels and apartment guest houses uh, and there are hosts of other pieces of regulations that came into force uh, in 1978. Key under that uh, Public Health Act are uh, two pieces of regulations that I know have come to the fore of late. One has to do with the nuisance regulation and the other one is the offensive trade regulations. They have both been enacted uh, and uh, enforced from 1978. Okay, and how often is this Public Health Act actually reviewed and amended? In the last 40 years or more, the Public Health Act has gone one review, and that was in 2001. However, the review was uh, not a substantial review. And if you compare the 2001 revised Public Health Act to the 1975 Act, you would not see many changes. So it was a basic superficial kind of review. The only substantial review that has been done to the Public Health Act was done in 2019. And this review allow for new areas uh, to be brought under regulations. Some of these new areas include body art. So we know St. Lucians have been doing tattooing and body piercing and so mm -hmm. forth. But that uh, practice had not been regulated. So on the new Public Health Act, it makes provision for regulations to be established for body art. Um, under the Public Health Act that was revised in 2019 as well, there is a new area that deals with um, smoking of tobacco products in public spaces. Mm -hmm. And what this act has done now is to um, take measures to ensure that uh, public smoking is uh, prohibited and therefore it must be done on the very regulated uh, conditions. So there are now regulations in place to deal with these areas. The, the, the Revised Act also deals with uh, issues like spas and, and massage parlors, and these are new areas generally, as well as uh, with this amendment uh, of the Public Health Act, there was a review also of the regulations that we mentioned earlier. So we're going to go more into some of these regulations because these regulations as well were amended. Okay. And when was the last time the Public Health Act was reviewed and amended? So like I said, the Public Health Act last review was in 2001. Okay. Um, there were some regulations that were reviewed. For example, the food regulations uh, was reviewed in 1983. Um, however, many of the pieces of legislation, including the regulations, have not had a substantial review 
over the last 40 years. Okay, and over this period, are there, um, have there been consultations um, with stakeholders? Sure. Um, the amendment of the legislation, both the Public Health Act and the regulations, has gone through a significant process over a, a period spanning more than 15 years now. Okay. There have been different consultations at different levels, including uh, the government employing a legal consult consultant to review these regulations and to have consultations with key stakeholders and parties uh, and to come up with the best mix for St. Lucia. And that uh, was done. Um, apart from the consultations, uh, there were uh, discussions uh, interministerially as well to look at what is uh, uh, the best approach in dealing with uh, the, the, the regulations. One of the things that we found is that St. Lucia have had significant development over the last 40 years. Well, we are actually due for a break, so we will definitely have to take this break. We will be back in a moment. Wash your hands, wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers, get under the nails, go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We will continue our discussion with the Chief Environmental Health Officer, Mr. Paco Ragnanen, on the Public Health Act. Before we took the break, we were discussing um, as it relates to the consultations. And you mentioned that besides the consultations, there were also ministerial um, reviews. Can you go in depth on this? Yes. So as part of the consultation process, a number of stakeholders were invited to consultations. Uh, this happened over a period of time because um, the, the ministry were looking at the review of two separate pieces of regulations or legislation. One had to do with the Public Health Act and simultaneously the Quarantine Act. Uh, what we have seen is that um, the, the, the Quarantine Act, for example, has been in force since 1945. So it's quite a dated piece of legislation. Therefore, we recognize that the Act uh, impacted different sectors. And as a result, the consultation that were held were held with uh, uh, associations were held with other ministries, agencies, and so forth. And uh, they were at different times and at different levels in terms of developing the final product for the amendment. But I was saying, apart from just these consultations, we have seen that the landscape of St. Lucia's development have changed significantly over the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, there was quite a lot of pressure being placed on the Division of Environmental Health to respond to some of the developmental issues. And hence the reason why it was so important uh, for us to have amendment to this legislation. So think of uh, the landscape in St. Lucia back 40 years ago. How many hotels did you have in St. Lucia at the time? How many restaurants did you have? How many industrial business places did you have? Mm -hmm. What was the kind of impact that was on the environment and human health back then? What we have seen is there have been significant development in terms of uh, the, the physical landscape of St. Lucia. What we have seen is uh, there have been increase in terms of commercial activities. There have been increase in terms of industrial activities institutional activities, agricultural activities have increased, as well as uh, an increased need for residential units, residential homes. What has happened is, because of this development, there's been encroachment on land use. So lands that were traditionally used mm -hmm. for one purpose have now been converted into mixed-use purposes. And therefore, you see there are challenges that occur as a result of uh, the mixed land use uh, 
policy that happens in St. Lucia. Importantly, over the last 40 years, we've, we've missed an opportunity as a country, I believe, uh, to have very cl clear land zoning plans mm -hmm. and policies for St. Lucia. And hence the reason why we see the impact of certain type of activities uh, impacting livelihoods, uh, impacting people's comfort living in their own homes. And uh, as well, we've seen an escalation in uh, the demands that have been placed on the country, both locally and uh, internationally. So all of these have formed part of the development landscape of St. Lucia, which has uh, really made it uh, important mm -hmm. to have uh, updated, uh, revised legislation to be able to deal with the challenges uh, that uh, ensue as a result of development. Wonderful. And um, some of the areas amended um, when we got to complaints received by the Environmental Health Division. Can you speak um, in terms of the numbers um, that the division actually um, received for complaints? Complaints is, is one of the biggest challenges that Environmental Health Division faces. One is there is uh, an expectation by the person who is lodging a complaint that the issues that are affecting them will be resolved. And primarily what we have been seeing is that uh, on a yearly basis, the department receives an average of 500 complaints. Yeah, that spans a number of areas. Many of them have to do with respiratory related complaints. What are these? So they talk about smells. So the smell from the pig pen and the smell from the barbecuing mm -hmm. and the smell from the charcoal making and the odor, uh, the spell from uh, indiscriminate burning of, of garbage. That has been a major complaint. Um, along with that, we have issues with regards to improper wastewater disposal. So very often we get complaints about uh, a defective septic tank uh, where wastewater from one septic tank or one soak away is surfacing above ground, mm -hmm. is flowing in a drain is crossing somebody's path. Every time somebody flushed their toilet, the smell again, cast it at my home. We have had complaints with regards to animal rearing. And people complain that there are animals, it, it starts from dogs, chickens, uh, pigs, and so forth. Uh, and we get the complaints all the time. We get the complaints uh, in terms of solid waste management and indiscriminate dumping, dumping of solid waste. These are some of the, the basic complaints that we receive. And there is a high expectation of, of the persons who are making the complaint that their matter will be resolved. Sad to say that these complaints sometimes, they take years and years before you can get a resolution. We've had situations, for example, where... Well, I would have to cut you off just a little because we are coming to the end of the program already. Yes. But I can definitely see that you have a lot of information for us. Well, that's how we've come to the end of Health Focus. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Parker Ragnanen, for providing us with this information on the public health Thank you. Thank you on again. behalf of the entire production team, I am Funal Neptune. Thanks for watching. Until next time.